All right, guys, bear with me right here as we get into a very deep topic. If you're my group, you're gonna understand this. You're gonna know that we've been on the cutting edge of this happening. Look, Visa on stage at DC FinTech Week talking about the use case for stable coins. They're talking about how crypto exchanges, especially starting off in Latin America, are turning into these foreign exchange hubs. Now, why is that? Well, because they hold a lot of stable coins at the exchange, right? Tether, USDC, whatever it be. And then when someone routes a payment to them, they're become the, 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 the payment providers in Latin America are starting to see crypto exchanges as a foreign exchange marketplace, right? What does that mean? That means they're routing to the, to the exchange, swapping into stablecoin, and then swapping into the other foreign exchange currency. What does that sound like? How does Visa know about this business model? Doesn't this sound a lot like on-demand liquidity? I'm not saying they're using XRP. They're using stablecoins. This was the original business model of Ripple's on-demand liquidity. Route payments to an exchange. The exchange, exchange holds XRP. Then they go into another currency and they make an FX swap. That is the original use case for XRP. But the original use case for XRP wasn't to do this at a physical location. They're doing this at a physical location only because they didn't have regulatory clarity. So now that stable coins are getting regulatory clarity, exchanges around the world are starting to adopt Ripple's business model. Just like Swift had to become Ripple, other crypto exchanges are now adopting the same business model. All right, this is where it gets interesting. Hold on with me, hold on, I'm about to blow your mind. Ripple is always one step ahead. What do I mean by this, okay? Initially, this was Ripple's business model on demand liquidity, and they had partnered exchanges around the world that would hold XRP, they would route payments, XRP, they would pay, uh, buy into XRP, sell out of it into a new currency. Now, this could be done with any crypto. This could be done with Bitcoin, it could be done with stable coins, it doesn't matter, all right? But let me tell you the reason for blockchain's existence in the first place. Blockchain exists to take that away from centralized authorities and give that to a decentralized technology, all right? The decentralized exchange will eventually replace centralized exchanges. The centralized exchanges that exist in the future will be because they are plugged in to the most efficient DEXs. There are going to be DEXs that take the center stage as a hub for FX in the future of decentralized world. Why? Cybersecurity, okay? We're seeing cybersecurity become a massive problem around the world. The exchanges, they might be financially capable of handling this volume, but their platforms itself might not be capable of robust, robust security. All right, just like the stablecoin is now moving in place of physical dollar, the decentralized exchanges will move in place and make centralized exchanges more efficient. So now the question is, if decentralized exchanges are eventually going to move in place of a centralized exchange and centralized exchanges just plug in to DEXs, that have efficient liquidity, so they don't have to hold as much crypto, just like Ripple's business model on-demand liquidity would slash your payments prices in half. The aggregated liquidity on the decentralized exchanges is going to do the same thing for centralized exchanges. Now on stage at DC FinTech Week, a man, uh, CUY Coy Sheffield, head of crypto at Visa, talked about this business model emerging, but I asked, they they know Ripple, They that where else would they have gotten this business model, right? Just like the video from two days ago that I posted, where a guy was talking about the biggest use case that is emerging is the swapping mechanisms. Now, 
the same thing happened, but instead of the bridging on a decentralized, he's talking about centralized decentralized. I'm gonna play the video right now. Be all ears, listen to this, because if you know Ripple, you know this is their business model. Now I'm not saying they're using XRP to do this, they're not. But I'm telling you, Ripple's business model, XRP's use case is the biggest use case in crypto, check it out. So as they mentioned, you know, one of the concepts that we're seeing more and more is this idea of the stablecoin sandwich. Uh, it's fiat on the front, you know, stablecoin in the middle, and then fiat you know, on the back. And it's just becoming another cross-border account-to-account payment rail. You know, we're seeing you know, companies doing U.S. to Mexico, you know, either B2B or, or P2P, where they're starting in dollars. They're using a stablecoin to move the money into the market. And then you have these local exchanges, many of which started as a place for people in Mexico to buy and sell Bitcoin, are now basically becoming FX platforms. Yeah. They're enabling you to convert stablecoins you know, into pesos and then to use local RTP rails to initiate you know, transfers to, to the last mile. And so all right, so this is emerging in Latin America right now, right? He said in the exchanges over there, people are just starting to realize that this is a use case for centralized exchanges. Eventually, decentralized exchanges will take the place, right? But not all of them are built for being a DEX. The number one DEX, the OG DEX, the original DEX of them all, the super DEX, to get this done is the XRP ledger and its little sister, the Stellar Network. We're already seeing stable coins being brought onto these networks. We're already seeing FX marketplaces come to decentralized exchanges. Members in my group understand that we have foreseen this coming. We just made a video in the group this morning, the market makers. This is going to be our opportunity to come up in a major, major way. Not only are we holding XRP the asset, not only are we in the game with the big, big fish now, we're seeing the next moves. What's actually driving this market is no longer retail narratives. What's driving this market now is real world use cases, tokenized fiat, tokenized debt, tokenized equity funds, private markets are coming on chain. Why would they come on chain? Because aggregated liquidity, being able to get liquidity, being able to get capital from around the world without having to go public in multiple markets, without having to go by different, this is going to revolutionize finance. Last night, just last night, I was watching people tokenize science projects. Okay? You've heard everything will be tokenized. Nature, science, equity. It's all here now. And what is going to be making it move? Stablecoin liquidity. Foreign exchange marketplaces. Derivatives marketplaces who is building it what other blockchains are getting ready for this transition just like we went from wired telephones to cell phones now we are going to eventually go from centralized exchanges holding crypto on cold wallets to centralized exchanges just being plugged into dexes they're not going to be holding crypto like they do now they're probably gonna cut their holdings by 50%. This is the same business model that Ripple has been telling central banks about for a decade. Cutting your Nostro Vostro in half. Why would you have to cut Nostro Vostro? Because we have aggregated liquidity on an efficient decentralized exchange. This DEX is designed for FX swaps for asset to asset swaps. These centralized exchanges are doing great right now, figuring out they can use stable coin liquidity for this exact same use case that Ripple and XRP set out to conquer. But they will eventually realize the same thing the telephone company realized is that it can get way better and it can get a lot more efficient. 
because they're only doing F fiat to fiat. They're going fiat stablecoin into a different foreign exchange fiat. That's what he just said in the video. But what is going to make it even better is that secret sauce, the XRP ledger, interledger protocol, being able to go from one asset to another, federating the entire financial system. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. You're here right now. This is the place. If you want to learn how to take advantage of this, the link is in the bio. We talk about stablecoin market making. That's all we do. Correlated assets, blue chip crypto assets. We build robust portfolios. We're in this for the long run. We are becoming career investors, career stablecoin liquidity providers. We're learning about real estate to buy tokenized real estate. We're learning about data centers so we can get involved in the tokenized data. All the links are down below. I'll see you guys on the next one.